put the cruise control on the autopilot and we are going to go for 1.4. I think that's what the company want today. 1.4. So it is the first trophy kokanee trip of the year. After some big chromers today, it is a glorious winter day. Fish in new water, never fished this high up in Lake Roosevelt. So I have no idea what I'm doing. I know how to catch kokanee, but I just, I know that they can be really patchy, especially on Lake Roosevelt. A lot of water, not many fish. So the tough thing about trolling for kokanee is uh, you don't exactly cover a lot of water when you're cruising at 1.4 miles per hour. It is overcast, which is good. I got Silver Dodger with a pink fly, my kokanee kabari fly, here. This is a Yakima Bates, like skateboard style Dodger. Over there, I'm going to be running an Aero Flash Silver Moon Jelly with a pink micro hoochie. I'm in my Old Town Autopilot today. No pedals. If it was colder, I'd probably actually prefer to pedal. So one of the neat features of this autopilot is it, what makes it really great for kokanee trolling is I have the ability here to set my cruise control and I can actually dial it up and down by one tenth of a mile per hour. So I can really set it in that 1.3, 1.5 range and it does a very good job of keeping you there. It automatically adjusts for current and wind and things like that, so I don't have to worry about it as much. So it just really gives me that peace of mind. I can just focus on the fishing. I don't have to worry about uh, pedaling and trying to counter the wind and things like that, so it's really nice. Running on the surface today, right? So water temperatures are a balmy 38 degrees. So not expecting the kokanee to be deep. They should be on the top. That should be the rainbow trout. Hopefully I get something today. I just want to catch a fish. And I mark a fish on the bottom. First fish of the day marked on the bottom. Awesome. I'm a genius. That's probably a bass or walleye or something. Or it's the world record kokanee. I don't know. I'm flatlining. 100 feet back. 10 pound monofilament on Sandy Am's kokanee fishing rods. Oop. No droppers. Just straight back to the dodger. Don't need droppers. All right, making our turns. Zigging and zagging. And gone zagging. <sighs> slow, slow, slow start to the day. Where's the fish I want to play? Man, does it cold when it's 33 with even a little bit of wind. I'm not marking much, which means the fish are high. But I'm also not catching much, which might also mean there's no fish here. Or that they're just lockjaw. Well, that was a new moon last night, so they shouldn't have been feeding. Cloudy. A little bit of wind. Seems perfect. Ooh, there's a fish. Doesn't feel big, but I'll take it. First fish of the day. What's it going to be? Pretty chromey. Oh, it popped. I think it was a small kokanee, but I'm not sure. Definitely wasn't very big. Oh. Feels pretty good. Oh, he's off. Dang it. Gonna ditch the skateboard dodger and pink fly for another arrow flash in orange with an orange micro hoochie. Since that's been bit. Micro hoochies and arrow flash have been bit twice already today. Hasn't landed nothing, but 
I don't know. Just can't keep doing the same thing. You gotta change something up. Fish. Feels decent. Oh, he popped, I think. Bummer. That sucks. Had one. That was probably kokanee, but didn't feel like a giant. I wasn't taking line or anything. But it was on the one I changed up to, so that's a good sign. Oh, this feels good. Stay on there. It's heavy, so it's either a big rainbow or a big kokanee. Slow and steady. It's swimming at me. Swimming at me. Still coming right at me. I hate when they come right at me because they're gonna go squirrely right at the boat. Yeah, that's a big kokanee. Okay, let's get this thing in the boat. Come here. Come here, big girl. Come on. Oh, it's a tank. Don't do that. Don't. Don't. Oh, I hate the death roll. Come on. Come on. Oh, I missed. Come on. God, I missed again. Come on, Tyler. Get this thing in the boat. All right. This is going to be it. Yes. <laughs> yes. A giant. That's what I'm here for. Oh. Oh my gosh, that is just amazing. What oh, a spectacular fish. That thing is thick. Awesome. Well, that's what we come here for, these giant kokanee. Look at these things. Gosh, they're awesome. So impressive. I mean, that is incredible for an inland freshwater salmon. Well, the sun came out. And the fish came out. It's great. Best of both worlds. Well, I tell you, having the autopilot's nice because I can maintain that pressure. I'm not having to worry about pedaling when I've got a fish on. I can dial that. I pulled that speed down to about one mile per hour that helped keep pressure on that fish. And then when I got it close, I killed it. I was able to scoop it up in the net. So I don't normally target these kokanee early season in like Roosevelt. Typically my Trophy kokanee season kicks off March, April as those fish start to move uh, down closer to the dam um, as they start releasing water uh, in preparation for drawing the reservoir down for the spring flood. And that pulls these kokanee down and concentrates them in a much smaller area from the Swahwila Basin down to the dam. Uh, during the rest of the year, uh, they tend to move back up closer to Keller's Ferry and even further up like I am today. And they tend to spread out a lot more, so they tend to be a little bit more difficult to find. Um, you know, it's it's a good day when you find one. It's a great day if you find t two big ones. Uh, so I don't tend to target them, but um, we had a little bit of a warm break and I've been eager to get the autopilot out and really chase after some of these trophy cokes. Because one of the biggest issues I've had with uh, those fish is that oftentimes I'm you know trolling with a hundred feet of line out relatively shallow uh, the fight with these fish is a little bit more prolonged than with other kokanee so I'm, I'm you know I'm having to maintain pressure while I'm pedaling and worrying about the other rod um, you know giving it too much slack and letting it snag up on the bottom um, so it's been really nice just having the autopilot to sort of take the wheel for me to so to speak so that it just keeps trolling i usually will let the fish hook up and hold it for a little bit at 1.4 1.5 whatever i'm trolling 
and then I can just reach over. I've got it attached here using a ram tough claw, so it's not going to pop off. And I can push dial down that speed just really rapidly, knock it down to a, you know like one mile an hour. That's enough to keep the other rod up off the bottom and keep pressure on the fish and then I can just focus on the fish. And if I find I'm having trouble getting it, you know, in the net when I get it close because of the pressure from the motor going, I can just hit one button, it kills the motor, and I can usually swoop the fish up in the net. One thing's for sure though, pedaling definitely keeps me warmer. So I'm powering my kayak using a 100 amp hour lithium battery, although you, you can use sealed lead acid, but the lithium, you know, reduces the weight uh, substantially. And of course, the less weight I have in here, the longer my battery is going to last because the motor's not working as hard. But also, that lithium, um, you know, it keeps that 12 volt uh, output curve a lot deeper into the cycle on the battery. So um, I can expect, you know, a lot better performance out of it, especially in cold weather. Um, I've done some experiments with different batteries, sealed lead acid versus lithium, and those lithiums really give you another 8-10% you know, um, output in cold weather, and then they're also giving you another you know, 10-15% uh, output compared to a sealed lead acid. So you start, you put all those variables together and it really starts to pay off to have that lithium battery. They're expensive, but you know, it's real nice to be able to pick up the battery without really straining myself to it. It doesn't weigh that much. Top speed in the autopilot um, is right around four miles per hour for me. Um, and that definitely chews into the battery a lot faster, but one and a half uh, miles per hour, you know, trolling is, and no current or minimal current is uh, no issue for this vessel. So it's, it's really nice. Today I'm just using cured corn with uh, Procure's uh, water soluble shrimp oil and their anise bait oil. That's kind of my preferred early season kokanee mix. Later in the summer I'll start switching over to more of the bloody tuna and uh, garlic. Seems to do better once those water temps get above 55-60 degrees for some reason. Okay. That water is cold. I forgot it's 38 degrees. Actually does not feel good on the hands. That's good too. Feels like a good one. Doesn't feel as big as the last, but feels decent. Swimming with me. Swimming with me. This one's on the orange arrow flash and orange hoochie. Let's see what we got. Oh no, it's a rainbow. It's a shiny rainbow. Nice one though. Chrome. Beautiful fish. Big fatty. Not bad. Get him back in the water. There he goes. See ya. I got this cool little waterfall I found. I bet you that thing is super impressive during the spring runoff. It just comes right off that cliff. It's pretty cool. I always feel like I should catch fish by waterfalls, but I never do. I guess I shouldn't go chasing waterfalls. Yeah. Well, I have not been bit in like two and a half hours and it's pretty glassy. Not seeing a whole lot of activity. Seems like there's just that little window. I had a couple bites. I got that really nice kokanee and then uh, a trout and it's just been dead since. So I can see the boat launch. It's about two miles that way. So I still got a ways to go and I got about an hour and a half of daylight left, at least until the sun drops behind the hills. And the temp's gonna drop really fast, so I think I'm going to pick up and head in. One of my favorite features of the autopilot, especially at the end of the day, is I can see the boat ramp way, way, way down the horizon on the opposite side of the lake. 
got everything pulled away, but I got a lot of stuff that needs to be taken care of. Um, but I'll have time to take care of it because what I can do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the cruise control. And then once I get the boat pointed in the direction I need it to, I can point it right at the boat ramp. I can hit this little in button. That's the heading feature. And now it'll keep me on that heading. Even if the, the wind kicks me around or current, um, it will straighten out the motor. So for example, if I push the rudder, turn it away you see the head of the, the head turns to pull me back in the correct direction so that's a pretty cool uh pretty cool feature of the autopilot and then once it gets you corrected it will straighten the motor back out and keep you going in the right direction so this is really nice because now i can just focus on taking care of things and i can go ahead and crank up the speed now and get me up to about four miles per hour and I can focus on getting things packed away for when I get to the boat ramp. Super happy to get my first big trophy kokanee of the year. If you guys have any questions about Lake Roosevelt kokanee wintertime or springtime, which is generally when I'm more active on this lake, just let me know in the comments section below and I will get back to you. And just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye guys.